So I just have to get this off my chest and I'm sure there's so many of you guys out there that feel exactly the same way about this. And it is, we're all customers, aren't we? We're all customers to lots of different um, things that we buy things and also services. Obviously we all pay um, like bills, electricity, gas, um, and we all have services that we pay for. So services and products that we're customers of. And um, this has been on my mind for two reasons. So number one, I run a business and I know what it's like to run a business. You want to obviously make a profit so that you make a living and you want to be able to serve your clients to the best without scamming them in any way. Anybody out there that runs a business, I'm sure if you're a good person, you'll know that, that, that you want to give your customers the best, you want to make a profit and you want everything to be transparent. So that's one angle that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. And the second one is about how I've been looking at getting life insurance. So I have been looking at lots of different companies to get life insurance so that if anything happened to us, um, financially, my family would have money to pay off like the mortgage because we're buying our first property and also critical illness and um, uh, it's like sick pay. So like um, income protection, if anything was to happen to your income, y you can be insured so that you would still get uh, money from the insurance company. So I've been looking at this and I was quoted by somebody, I think it was a couple of hundred pounds for the month, which sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? Like 200 pounds sounds like a lot of money every single month. You're like, oh my goodness, that's that's a lot of money. So I looked at lots of other companies as well and they were charging me a lot less, like a quarter, so 50 pounds. And so I was like, oh, that's that's a lot cheaper. I was like, I'm gonna look into this because I run a business, so I know always to check for the sneakiness. So I know this from my own experience, running my own business, I know how sneaky companies are. So we sell we sell healthy products and when somebody buys, say, a 15 pound hair and body wash for their children from me and they say to me, gosh, Danny, 15 pounds, I'm used to spending a pound. And I'm like, yeah, but when you spend a pound on your product, how long does it last? And they say a week. And I say, but my product lasts a year. So you're, you're talking about spending one pound 52 times a year versus my product, £15 for one year. Think about the difference that's going to make to the environment, not to mention how many times you're having to repeat order that product and not to mention the reason why it's a pound. It's a pound because it's filled and watered down with loads of nasties. It's just got waste product in there. That's why it's a pound. So companies are really sneaky. And I also know this from working in ophthalmology, which was my background. So working in the opticians, I don't know if you know this, but one of the most inflated um, products is, is in the optical industry. So frames and lenses, which you can pay like 200 pounds for a pair of frames and lenses, and they cost pence to make. So I know about, about the price rise in that. Now, don't get me wrong. The reason why they have to go up in price is yes, to pay for staff and to pay for overheads and insurances and um, advertising but they go up like you're talking like 500 percent. the price goes up it's ridiculous so uh, so when I was looking at life insurance and I was looking at companies that were charging me 200 pounds a month versus 50 pounds a month I was like I'm gonna do some digging so I was digging, digging, digging. And what I found was the cheaper companies that are like, oh my gosh, like we're so much cheaper than the rest. Like come to us, we're so much better. I discovered that there is so many clauses for people that need to make a claim that it gets to the point where people are not, they, they don't bother making their claim because it's that difficult to make their claim if they needed to. Now, if you were to suffer the loss of a family member, a spouse was to pass away, the last thing on your mind is jumping through loopholes to try and get an insurance claim. You are depressed, you are miserable and you are grieving, quite rightly so. You do not need the stress of an insurance company making you do this, 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 this. And, and if you didn't do this, then you, then you don't get a payout. If you didn't do this, you don't get a payout. And if they didn't die in this particular time of this particular day, you don't get a payout. That's the last thing that you need to be worrying about. Sometimes cheap is not always better. And I was looking at these um, life insurance policies and comparing and thinking, do you know what? I'd sooner pay the extra, the £200 a month, and have a transparent company where I I hope I never have to make a claim. I truly hope, touch wood, I never have to make a claim. But if I did, I want a transparent company that are just going to accept the information that I tell them and then they pay out with their insurance claim. Dun, dun, dun. None of this check the small print. And if you are somebody that is looking at maybe getting out life insurance like I am, or maybe you're looking at taking out um, a new service provider for your gas and electric or 
I don't know, you're looking at buying a new car or buying a house, or maybe even you're looking at swapping your brand like what I do. So obviously I sell um, I sell Arbonne products on my online website. So maybe you're looking at switching brands. Always look at the small print because when you compare, so people say this to me all the time, they're like, why is your shampoo um, like three times the amount of the shampoo that I can buy from the high street? And I have to say to them, you've got to look at the small print. You've got to look at the ingredients. That's like comparing a McDonald's breakfast for two ninety nine to the breakfast that they serve the Queen in Buckingham Palace that costs twenty four ninety nine. Yes, it's a breakfast, um, and yes, I sell shampoo, but how they're made is completely different. So it's trying to look between like it's trying to look between the lines and discover where people are scamming you and where people are hoping that you don't do your due diligence and you don't look into it enough. Like the amount of clients that I have that come to me because their child's got eczema, they've got psoriasis, they've got IBS, they've got low energy levels, their hair breaks, they've they've got gut irritations, they've got allergies and they are just unwell. They're just on a day-to-day basis unwell and not full of energy. And we look at the products that they're using and the products are causing them to feel like this. And I'm like, did you look at the small print? Did you look at the ingredients of all this stuff that you're putting on your body every single day? Your, your body, your skin, your skin is the largest organ in your body and you're putting all this stuff on it. No wonder you feel like really really low energy and it's just trying to it is trying to do that due diligence and if you don't know if you don't know enough you need to find somebody that does so I am not a life insurance um network marketer so so life insurance is is a network marketing um business model like lots of things are nowadays because people prefer word of mouth to anything else um so i asked somebody that did um, network marketing but in the life insurance sector and i asked them just to have a look at it and they were like that that's um that's um look at the small print there like that's bad that's bad that's bad that's bad and they showed me everything i was like oh my gosh oh my gosh and this is like when people come to me and they say um right i want to start a network marketing business um what would you advise? And I give them advice based on my experience. And I'm glad they asked me because I've had a network marketing business for five years and I've built it to the top level of the company. And they might not decide to join what I do and that's fine. But I'm glad they've asked me rather than their next door neighbor or their uncle that's got no experience in network marketing. Like I would never decide that I'm going to be a hairdresser and go and ask my next door neighbor what they thought or my husband what he thought because they're not hairdressers. I would ask a hairdresser. I'd ask somebody in the industry. So when people come to me and they're like, I want to join a network marketing company, I say to them, is the company that you're looking at stamped by the DSA? First thing, and if they're not stamped by the DSA, you run a mile. You don't want to be anywhere near that. There's good and bad in every industry. That is the first way to decipher who's good and who's bad. Do they have the DSA stamp, the Direct Selling Association stamp? This is like getting somebody to come to your house and look at your gas oven and they're not gas registered or corgi registered. Like you get them out of your house as quickly as possible. So the first thing, are they DSA stamped? The second thing is what they're selling, whether it's a service or a product, something that people are going to repeat by because they love it. You know, if if somebody's just putting money into something like it's stocks and shares, do they are they doing it because of it's um because they're addicted to the adrenaline rush like gambling or is it actually something that they really really love so um for me i'm a customer to utility warehouse i love using utility warehouse to pay for my um gas and my electric and my internet and it's just, it's i don't make any money out of that because i'm not doing it as a business i'm i'm purely a customer and i will pay that f- and for well forever i guess because i love it and i also buy candles from companies i buy oils essential oils from different companies i buy books from different companies I'm a customer to lots of companies because I love the product so I say to people it, when when you're thinking about your customer base is the product or service that you have something that people are going to love as a customer and not just do it because they want to do it as a business like is is it something really 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 good that's the second question and the next question I ask is, is it something that you are going to enjoy doing? Because it takes a few years to build a business. Whatever business it is, are you going to, are you going to enjoy doing it? Because for most people, this is a secondary income, maybe a third or fourth income. They say that the average household nowadays needs four incomes to lead a standard middle class lifestyle. So for most people, this is probably like their fourth income, a network marketing business. And I say to them, this is going to be something you, you're going to be doing around your main jobs, around your family so is it something you're going to really get get a lot out of and really enjoy doing because it's not going to build overnight it's going to take a couple of years to build 
to to get to the point where you're earning like three, four, five thousand pounds a month, that takes time to build those repeat customers and for them to refer people to you and to build a team and to teach and train people. It takes time. So are you going to enjoy doing it? Is it something that's going to be fun or is it something where you're going to feel like, oh gosh, I'm going to have to do do my uh, my Arbon business today or whatever the business is? So are you going to enjoy doing it? And I say to them this is all on you. When you start a business, this is all on you. Like you can't rely on um, the training that's provided for you. You can't rely on like the product to do the work for you. This is all on you. Like whatever business you, you start, whether you're a hairdresser, a tiler, whatever it is, this is on you loving what you do and providing enough value for people that they want to pay for what it is that you have to offer. So my, um, my final thoughts are... Are you checking small print? Are you doing your due diligence? And if you don't know, ask somebody that does. Ask somebody that has been in that industry, that knows, that can tell you more than maybe what you're able to to talk to you about. Don't just look at the price like I did and think, right, £200 versus £50. Look at what you get for that. And this is what I say to people about products. I'm like, yeah, my mascara is £20, but look at what you're getting when you're spending £1 on your mascara that's got bat poo in it. You know, Google it. So... It's just about looking at the small print, doing your due diligence and and asking somebody that's got experience of what it is that you're looking into for them to shine a light over it and tell you a little bit more. So I hope that that was useful for you. I am taking out the more expensive life insurance policy because peace of mind, pure peace of mind. And I don't want to jump through crazy hoops and be scammed by somebody that's selling it cheaper with all these different faults in the... um, in the contract, if you can call it a contract, in the terms and conditions. So have a good day, everyone. Speak soon.